We are so happy to have Dr. Griffin Rogers with us now, this year's recipient of the President's Medal. Congratulations to you. Well, thanks so much. Should also say you are the director of the National Institute of Diabetes, Digestive and Kidney Diseases. Yes. Your reaction to receiving this great honor? Well, I was, I was so impressed and humbled by receiving the award and, and being listed with so many other famous and distinguished uh, previous medal recipients. I, while I accepted the award, I'm accepting it on behalf of my institute, the National Institute of Diabetes, Digestive and Kidney Diseases, and we've had a long-standing uh, collaborative relationship with the American Society of Nephrology. I think we collectively all have the same goal to prevent, to better treat, and ultimately to cure kidney diseases. Well, you did give a state-of-the-art lecture as well, that titled Sickle Cell Anemia, Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. You want to give us a brief overview of some of the topics you hit upon? Sure. Sickle cell anemia is one of the, was the first disease in this country to be understood at a molecular level. And in my talk, I tried to highlight that understanding of that particular genetic disease, which is a disease that affects the red blood cells and a very specific mutation in one of the genes for globin and how that knowledge has now led to other discoveries in terms of better treatments for the disease today and the hope in the future for uh, treatments that will actually get at changing that particular mutation uh, as a first genetic cure of the disease. And I try to display how our understanding of sickle cell disease has illuminated broader principles which have found application in other both genetic as well as acquired diseases. What are some takeaways that you're hoping those who are able to listen to that are able to take away as they leave this week? I think that uh, understanding a disease at the very fundamental molecular and cellular basis uh, is so important and that was the case in sickle cell disease that that leads a path forward in terms of how one intervenes in the disease uh, and not all patients actually have the same severity of disease and better understanding of population-based studies gives one clues as to how one might replicate these people with less severe disease in terms of their treatment. Uh, it also sort of points to sort of a way forward and um, I think a, a major take-home point is here's a disease that was first described in this country well over a hundred years from now but it was only until the 1990s that we had the first FDA approved treatment. So this is really a marathon. This isn't uh, something you know, that you can expect a result in a short period of time. But I think this knowledge has really so greatly expanded that we are hopeful that this might be the first disease, as, and I'm quoting my, my boss now, Dr. Francis Collins, that within the next five to seven years, we may be able to cure. Uh, genetic disease that we can cure by going in and editing the genes uh, in their hematopoietic stem cells and then replacing it, giving it back to them. I was going to ask about the future, but you basically addressed it there. What, anything else that you would like to add as we end Kidney Week here, um, specifically related to nephrology? No, absolutely. Well, uh, nephrology and, and certainly chronic kidney disease currently affects, say, 20 three to 25 million Americans. Most don't, aren't aware that they have kidney disease. And what we want to do is keep patients who have chronic kidney disease knowledgeable of the fact that these diseases tend to run in families. And so people with chronic kidney disease, when they see their doctor, uh, they should say, you know, there's someone in my family with kidney disease. Should I be tested? Because I understand that it's a silent disease until it's almost too late. And I don't want to go on dialysis like my uncle or my, or my brother. So to be tested, if it's appropriate, if it runs in your family, if you have high blood pressure, if you have diabetes, you should be tested. Simple tests, a blood test and a urine test. If you don't have it, that's great. If you do have it, get on the appropriate therapies for it to kind of halt the progression of the disease. Uh, it's a disease in which we have now some 600 to 700,000 people on dialysis or they require a transplant and so what our hope is in terms of the research in this area that eventually we'll be able to stabilize, restore and then reverse kidney disease uh, in patients who haven't yet progressed 
and we'll be able to develop better ways to uh, actually restore kidney function in people who are on dialysis. And uh, that's the future, uh, regenerative medicine. And we just hope that uh, with ongoing research, that day forward will be in the next seven to 10 years. And so I'm very excited about that possibility. And so is the American Society of Nephrology. Well, thank you for all the work that you do, Dr. Griffin Rogers. And once again, congratulations for receiving ASN's President's Medal. Thank you so much for having me. ASN TV has all the coverage you want from this year's conference. Be sure to check out all of the content, which is updated every day here on YouTube during Kidney Week 2018.